Hello, everybody. I'm Verde Augusto, and this is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel on YouTube and on Facebook as well. And I want to thank you for being here. If you're new, if you're new, and this is the first time here, uh, welcome. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, as you interact more with the channel, you get the updates to that channel more. So if you want to know what's going on with your channel, go to old videos, watch them, comment, like, thumbs up, share it. You know, it'll keep it high in the, the algorithm. Um, it's one of the reasons why you should, to your favorite channels, go over there and support them so that the YouTube algorithm recognizes that you like that particular video and it, more of them will show up. Okay, and you would be surprised at what shows up when you do that. Okay. My clear stated intention for this video is that I'm going to talk about the, um, I guess the first part is talk about the uh, influence of earthquakes on the Schumann resonance and what type of signature do they leave on the Schumann resonances. Right, so that's, I think, first and foremost. Um, the second thing, is um, a little bit more tricky to explain. What is the difference between solar radiance and earthquake signature? I think that maybe that's a good way to put it. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the um, this is a comparison between uh, two stations. One is in Italy, in Cumiania, uh, which is northwest Italy, I guess. And then there is uh, Tomsk, Russia, Tomask, which is in uh, Siberia. So, what we are looking at, I did a video, this, um, uh, this one here comes at the, uh, the heel of, you know, at the end of a related video discussing, uh, Italy and discussing the, the high amplitude peaks of, um, on the 4th and the 5th, um, that, that were around, like, 1,200, or more, or whatever, um, and that, in that video, I showed a comparison of the earthquake spike, the, uh, I'm sorry, the amplitude spike on the Schumann spectrogram, and then also showed you the subsequent earthquake, uh, activity that's going on now. Right, I just gave some examples. It was a, you know, it's a relatively quick video to show, you know, just a a, a general correlation of the geographically what's happening there, and you know, a map, right, like I have here, uh, but with earthquake behavior that's happening at the time simultaneously at the time of that um, those peaks, the spikes, the peaks, the peaks. <laughs> So, um, so I've already done some 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 introductory videos on this this topic. Hold on a sec. Let me pause. Additionally, I have shown in uh, another post. I've shown other places that um, <clears throat> excuse me that uh, there is a a signature that happens with um, around the time of earthquakes a uh, 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 amplitude signature electric signal that goes out around the time of the earthquake um, generally it's it's comes after the you know comes after the time of the earth you know like after the time of the earthquake but it's 
simultaneously, we'll say. Because as things are happening, there's still that signature that's going on. It's still producing, a, you know, there's a variety of phenomena that happens around the time of earthquakes that are electromagnetic in nature and so on and so forth that we can see on the Schumann resonances on the VLF chart graph. Uh, and yet there's other things going on as well. Like strange animal behavior and so on and so forth. So this is in part, it's a, a discussion of, or at least the introduction, it's a basic introduction of the, the correlation between earthquake behavior and Schumann resonances as a whole and what you're seeing on the, the Schumann. You know, what this here, uh, the spectrogram, generally speaking, I, I'm just going to make a, on, within this community, uh, the YouTube, and I'll narrow it down, the YouTube community on uh, either Ascension or the Schumann Resonances, the, you know, this spectrogram from Tomsk is what's referred to as the Schumann. And in lieu of that, you got this mystery here. You know. uh, it's the VLF reading. It's not a Schumann reading. I mean, so, if you, you know, if you're not calling that a Schumann, that's proper. You know, this would be the Schumann. But even then, still, that's, that's a, to me, it's a nonsensical phrase because I, I don't, that's a, it's a confused phrase for me. I know what you mean, but it's not what that is. It's the spectrogram, right? And it's the colloquial handy, handy term, you know, like handicap. Uh, yeah, you know, the handy term is the Schumann, but it's the, the properly the sh the Schumann resonance spectrogram. <laughs> okay, and this is the the full report with all the dependencies, the the, the three dependencies of amplitude, of quality, and of frequency. Oh, I just have to say uh, to be off the mark for a minute. I love these new glasses. I had stored them away in my art supplies, and I'm like, oh, you know, the other ones were kind of scuffed, and I was just beginning to not like those. And then these, like, oh, the wire frame. I love these. It's almost like I'm not wearing glasses. Um, all right. So uh, with that said, um, our stated intention is to talk about the earthquakes um, and also solar behavior here. All right. I had have made in posts and in the comments on YouTube where we were talking about the those peaks in Kumiania that it's earthquake behavior. And on a YouTube channel, I'm not going to say which one. Uh, she's a light worker. She does well otherwise. You know, she kind of almost chased me down chased me out of there because I would dare to say that this is earthquake caused and it's not ascension based which is with the sun the solar right? so the solar does happen okay the solar influence and that's sort of what this discussion is that there is the solar influence, of course, on the Schumer resonances and the spectrogram. But what you are seeing in the Italian site is it's how do I say this? The Italian site is set up to collect earthquake data earthquake related data prediction data that's why they're spending all the money on this the VLF station which measures up into 15,000 Hertz uh, um, uh, in, in the uh, 
the vertical frequency. All right, 200 hertz. That range is a, a or 120 hertz or 15,000 hertz is the amplitude height, the amplitude frequency, okay? The amplitude moves like this, it waves like this, so it hits sky earth, sky earth, sky earth, sky earth, sky earth, okay? Rather than hugging the ground like the, like the magnetics, the amplitude does this. So every time you see it goes up, and then it comes down, you see there's a streak there, here. You see there's a streak there. This is the frequency of amplitude moving as a vertical frequency. Okay, but it's not, that's not properly a hertz. It's properly a decibel radius which is an intensity, okay? But people keep referring to this, the vertical number as a hertz, hertz number, and it's not properly a hertz number as in a cycle per second as the magnetic waves are and would be, could be, should be, as they are. Okay. So the amplitude frequency of that crazy number in hertz is an electric signal that is sent out through the atmosphere, which is not, that is the upright, right, the height, crazy height, okay, uh, If you've got a volcano blast up into the atmosphere, electric charge, right? Electric charge. A volcano is up there. You know, earthquake is up in the the atmosphere. It's up there. It's a hill. It's a big ass hill. It's a mountain, right? So there's height to this thing shaking. Right? So you're not only looking at the height of, you know, this flat thing here, you're not only looking at the height of the wave, it's a column. In a lot of cases, it's this column, a column that comes out that eventually resolves out into magnetics, which are flat, again, like hugging the ground, okay? So, but the initial push of it is a lot of times, you know, as you get a... Um, earthquake behavior that affects the mountains, you know, we're talking about some height to the column of, am you know, the column of amplitude, basically, you know, you know, 11,000 feet of a mountain that's up there, it's up there, right? So you just got to also look at it that way, that that's kind of what those peaks are as well, I have mentioned this before, is you got to look at this from the perspective of a 3D, kind of 3D space, that those amplitude spikes are literally up in the air, high column way up there. And so that's what these columns represent, is not the shimmer resonance frequency of hertz, but this is, a, this is an amplitude column of high of charge that is sent out into the atmosphere, sent out into the immediate environment around us. So, <clears throat> so as I've had a discussion with people, you know, with persons, with people, with you knowing what you're seeing, what you're looking at, right, it's important not to confuse this with the solar radiance, which if that was solar radiance, it would be kicking your butt. You know, I mean, if it was that kind of, like, it, you know, like that's what this would be. It would be brutal if it really was, you know, if Tomsk was getting the same reading of, you know, 15,000, uh, you, you'd be, you know, it would be a significantly different story than 
these guys that are getting the earthquake reading. So that's a very important thing. I always say the first lesson to know is what's going on locally with in the environment around the, the you know the the detectors. So you know one can't look at me and say that I'm not honest that I'm lying to people if I am telling you that the earthquake station just happened to have these crazy spikes around the time of an earthquake and that these people here these people who put this together are themselves telling you by their research they're telling you that Earthquakes cause electric amplitude vertical column signal to come out that we have received, right? That can be overwhelming over and above the native resonances, the native EMFs that are there, and that they say specifically the shimmer resonances. Okay. So one needs to be to you got to do your research you got to look into this you, you can't just say you know if you're on if if the schumann resonances in any way matters to your ascension and you're basing whatever's happening in your life on the printouts that are there and you're trying to get to know what this means then you need to know the local variables that get in your way of understanding what you're saying that you're not taking into consideration but also that this is a learning model unless you live in right there in italy then this is a real thing for you but if you're not living in italy this is a learning model for you so you can understand the influence of local models i mean the influence of the influence of local events that are caused on the shimmer resonance right so if you didn't feel the earthquake right i submit to you if you didn't feel this earthquake there's enough people that did feel this earthquake but this earthquake here right a volcanic rumbling if you if you are one of the people that felt that or was in that area affected by it, right, then, then, yeah, you would likely have, you know, phantom symptoms that are related to this. I would, I would accept that, right? If you're anywhere near Italy or Croatia, I have, there's people on Facebook, my Facebook, uh, um, members in the group how, who are over there in that area. So if they said that they felt affected, like, yeah, I, I believe in that. Okay. There's studies that correlate earthquake activity with, you know, admissions into the mental hospitals. All right. So there's studies on that. All right. So, and by the way, there is also studies on that. I'm just reading here on my... See that? Uh, shameless self promotion for my reading. Um, this is in California, and this is another one. I haven't even started reading this, but I get these updates from the academic journals. Uh, you know, you punch in earthquake, Schumann resonances, VLF, you know, piezoelectric. There's some key keywords, code words you punch in, and they'll send you interesting information, interesting articles, published articles on, on those topics. So, uh, so, yeah, you could just sort of barely read it. If you could read it, you know, good for you. I looked at the thing, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't read that. Okay. We are also going to look at something else as well. Right. So we have, um, like I said, this is a two-part kind of two-stroke, two-part, uh, 
you know, my, my stated clear intention was broken into two separate parts. So one of them was talking about the earthquake behavior relative to the Schumann resonances and VLF. Okay, so I've done that, part of that in another video, like I said, this is a continuation of that. Um, we're, we're examining that um, we're at the point in our narrative that we have moved on from that to now we're seeing uh, local uh, earthquake behavior has calmed down, and so too has the Schumann as well, uh, the, the, the spectro for both, uh, generally speaking, for both uh, Tomsk, Tomask, and for Italy. All right. So, we saw the before and after. Um, um, I have also, in the past, shown the, the decibel meter here. All right, so this, the color, the color code for this, how do you read the color, the red? I've said it before, I'll say it again. This right here, scroll down so I actually can see it. Bam. All right. Can't see that. There we are. There we are. Right in the middle of it. All right. You can see that. We all can see that. All right. So, um, There we go. Yay! All right, see, and you know what? I got my Risney shirt on today. I like the, um, I found this in their end of the year house cleaning, which is basically dumpster diving through their, you know, their massive, you know, waste bins that they get rid of all their stuff wholesale. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, all right, so um, <laughs> onward and upward. Uh, so, you can see here the, 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 the the colors that we're using. All right. So, um, as we can see here, what the colors mean. Right. So, you know, this right here, here. Then you have this right here. Just to there. Okay. All right. So this right here is negative 100 on this side. And this right here is zero. Okay, so somewhere around here, would be like negative 60, what if I'm 60, where it's right where that point is there. All right, so when we ask about what the colors mean, right, in different places, it means different things, all right, that this, the, the coloring on here means different things based on this is an amplitude meter, and it's a decibel meter, and it's not, you know, it's the vertical frequency of it coming in, leaving, coming in, that's a velocity, all right? So it's different what they're measuring here on the electric side than what they're measuring over here on the, uh, it's back to zero. So it, it's, they're measuring one thing over here and Tomask, Tomsk, is measuring something different over here. 
it's not the same range. They're measuring both the electric and the magnetic together. If I, if I can, the range of that that small range from zero, you know, point three to forty hertz. They cap it off right to forty. So the the um, the range of the chart in there with Tom's is smaller than what's happening with Italy. All right, your sample set coming from Italy. You know, it's showing you here somewhere. Somewhere in here that it is all right, zero to thirty. This is the seismic meter. Okay, are you following me? This is the seismic meter here. And channel one, seismic monitor, frequency range zero to thirty for the top spectrum. Top spectrum. Okay. So that's this one here. Okay. Zero to thirty. Hertz. Okay, it's zero to thirty hertz. Okay. And the size. So for the top spectrogram, um, so the next one, oh, um, 40 decibels, all right? That's, that's very super important to remember as well, 40 decibels, all right? So this part over here, this is the decibel. Okay. With and they also mention with a with a very low noise preamplifier. All right. So it's really important to remember that the signal gets amplified. It's got you know there's a preamplifier because it's it's an antenna. They're picking up pico electron volts, and they talk about negative decibel <clears throat> when I talk about negative decibel like a jet engine is at 120 plus decibels like 130 140 50 it's yeah like 130 50 somewhere around there <clears throat> excuse me uh, decibels like the 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 you having permanent hearing loss is that you know comes close to around 130 plus decibels all right so this is negative decibels right they have to amplify it to get the signal right so you got to remember that as well all right um and so the second one i think i just said that zero to 105 for the bottom all right so this is 105 and do they say um, all right, so this one here, this is coming in from a Marconi antenna. I don't have that copy of the picture of what that looks like, but I've shown that elsewhere. But it basically looks like an old-style FM, you know, or AM. Uh, no, I guess an FM type. It's a T. Like, it's a very simple-looking antenna that they have going on there. Um, but it's, a, you know, fairly complex to have it all working and not get electrocuted. All right, so... Um, all right, so all right, so all right, so I've 
mentioned something. All right. So the first part of this was that we're going to, again, con conscious, clear state and intention. The first part of this was to, to corroborate earthquake with VLF activity, which we've done. I have presented elsewhere the um, the literature from from uh, Cien, C I E N. Uh, Fidani, I believe the guy's name is Cristiano Fidani. So he wrote a report which I've shown elsewhere, um, and I will be referring to again. I'm making, still making this is still current, still making videos on this. So more of this will be shown again, but. Um, like he talks at length about the um, the electric signal that comes with earthquake behavior. All right, so you can't look at the Italian. A person couldn't look at the Italian station reading and then say, "That it's." Oh, that's obviously why I'm getting these symptoms, or that's why I feel this way. When this is not the same reading as Tomsk for a reason. Tomas, Tomsk, is not picking up these signals for a reason. And the, and the reason is not because Tomsk is hiding something, except for the fact that they're using a filter that filters out a wide range of stuff. Yeah, so there's lots of stuff happening in the galaxy and in the world and, and you know, other parts of Europe, you know, or Russia even, that they're filtering out because it's not the Schumann resonances. Okay. So part of one of the things that I want to show you is along those lines of verification that we just showed, for example, the, and I, and I have been, this is ongoing, right? This is an introduction. And as I go into this, it gets more and more complete, but this is still an introduction of the concept of how the shimmer resonances are related to earthquake behavior. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm, I'm building on what I've already gone through, okay? And as such, We've established a good kind of hold of the reality of the VLFs on the spectrographic readings, that they're deceiving, deceptive that way. Okay. That if you don't know what you're reading, you don't know what you're looking at, you can be, you know, it, it, you can be confused and, and, and come up with a false impression of what the, the readings mean. Okay. I'll just say that. All right. So... That's why it's important to know what you're looking at, so you're not deceived. All right. So, uh, so all right. So I've explained about you know how to read the you know somewhat how to read the um, the spectros from here. I've shown what they they have talked about. All right. Um, and that's it, Italy on this this side. I've talked a lot more about Tomsk on the other side. All right. So I, I want to show you something. All right. So. This is what we're talking about when I when I say you got to kind of verify why you use other meters and other you know things to kind of cross reference and check what's going on. You look at the reports of the people who actually have created the 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 site and who maintain the antenna. That's the, how you get data from them and how you know what's going on with Tom's you know or with you know Italy is you got to read up on what's what's happening. So. So these things all interrelate in some way. Like, all right, so how how we we look in? All right, so, um, all right, so, you know, the last couple of days the earthquake be you know the earthquake has calmed down over there. We see, like I said, it's calmed down here on the on the uh, the Italian Schumann spectrum. All right, now we all right. Let me just pause this. The reason it can take me a few days to make these videos is because I'm comparing a, a big chunk, a bigger chunk of data than you are, right? I just want to say that. Why does it take me longer to get one of these out? 
because I am comparing a bigger mass of data than you are, and I'm getting reports, and I'm getting, you know, like I'm just doing, not just looking at the report and imagining what it is, like I'm actually researching, what is it? It's just that simple. So my videos take longer. You know, this was originally from the 4th and the 5th. You know, the 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 first time that I was going to write about the earthquake, or did write my my post about the 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 earthquake behavior on the sixth. Right, I wrote about it. I finally got that video done today on the eighth. Okay, and so you know, in in Facebook, they ask, well, how you know, or they don't ask so much as just complain that there's not more real time data, and it's like. You know, there's a bunch of people that have the app. People post real-time enough stuff, but always with a question mark. What is it? Right? But So the people that post on the spot are at big question marks. What is it? You know, big things like I do with the arrows and, you know, question marks. What is it? Like, well, let me give me a chance to answer it. Give me a chance to research. Let me see what's going on. So my my videos come out a few days after the event because I'm researching, I'm looking into it. I got to get historical data on this stuff sometimes, right? Correlate, right? That's what you do. You don't just assume that because there's a spike there, it's a sentient energy and we're all going to heaven right then, you know, like this is it. Like, no, man, this ain't it. This is by far and away ain't it. You know, like, no, no, there's a long journey still ahead of us. You know, there's still a whole lot of clearing that's got to go down. So, no, this ain't it. Believe me, if it was, I would be on that ship out of here. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so the data, the correlation. So we already have the data. We already have the information that earthquakes create an, an electric field to them. We already got that squared away, okay? What else can we learn here? Okay, so we got that part here. All right, so I want to bring your attention to... Let's move this up. So, so on the 6th... All right. Are you with me? 37 minutes in, I'm sorry. Not too painful, I guess. All right, so... On the 6th, we're looking here. All right, so by then, the earthquake behavior calmed down, and it went back to a state of normalcy, okay? You know, even with this, you got to accept, or it's maybe not the earthquake, you know, it's maybe not earthquake. All right, because you see how the earthquake's way, you know, it's it's down there, it's significantly down there, but this is not... This is a little different here. Right. I want to bring your attention to this here. This, this. All right. All right. So this is 1800. Let's see if I can do this. This is 12. That's AM. This is noon. Doesn't look like an AM. This is you know, 6 PM. All right, so it's 12. So I'm not sure if that's local time or if that is UTC. This would be approximately three to four hours away from UTC. All right. So uh, zero UTC is Greenwich, England. So this would be two, maybe three time zones, hours. It's essentially hours away. Uh, two or three time zones away. So we get a good lock just, you know, because it's around, it's approximately the same you know, time stamp 
uh, if it's local time or if it's UTC. Okay. So we see here six, like uh, three hours. All right. This is at three hours. Three hours. Six. This is nine. Oh, a.m. That's a.m. This is 9 a.m. Sorry, I said p.m. That's a.m. Okay, that's good. All right, so 9. And then we have roughly, that's, you know, roughly halfway. All right, so then we have another, you know, halfway mark here. So that's um, 15, so it's 3. That's p.m. All right. Um. So we have, roughly speaking, three, uh, I'm sorry, at 9 a.m., from 9 to 3 to, would you say 2? This marks 2 p.m. Okay. We'll just call that 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Roughly there. All right. So that's where on the sixth. All right. All right. Okay. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. All right. So now you could see that there's a little activity there. Okay. We, we just pointed that out on my doodling, right? There's a little something going on there, All right? So that is, you see, this has gone up to our resonance point there, which is 27, 28, roughly 30 hertz on the horizontal. So we have all right. So our KP index at that time shows there's something here. Okay, there's there's elevated there, and then it bumps up to like four. All right. All right. So that's something. Solar activity, and that's you know um, universal time. So uh, fifteen looks like fifteen fifteen minutes. Fifteen. No, not fifteen minutes. Every every couple hours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 24 hours divided into eight. So that's four hours. These are four hour. All right, so that's four, eight, 12. So roughly right about there, that mark there, we have that spike there, right? That we just saw over there. There, right? So this is a KP went up to four. And over here, we're showing a little bump of up to, you know, 30. I mean, where, how far do we go up there? Maybe 40, 45 or something? The highest Schumann resonance is 45. So we hit maybe hit 50 there, if that. Right? I mean, it's just right at the end of the chart there. All right. So, so we look here. All right. So we saw our KP. We look here. Okay. So, um, hold on, coffee break. All right, so we see our KP, KP index, all right, it's boosted, it's up to four, all right. Now, this right here, scoot up, all right. So, this right here, and I'm going to scoot out again, all right, wow. All right, so the 
this right here, we recognize, or I recognize as, all right, so remember, around noon, universal time, we see the spike here. So we have here, we're at noon. I'm going to get it so you can see this. All right. So noon is right here. And what's going on at noon? You see this spiky here. Okay. So well, that's 12, 12 noon there. All right. And then we see this, this spike here. Okay. Which isn't very big per se okay i do admit but you see these uh what do you call it? the 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 waveform of the, these modes the four modes are synchronous they look nearly identical they're very closely related even though there's some jaggy edges here and there like, okay, it's, you know, there's still some jaggy edges there. And like, all right, you know, a BC spike, it kind of comes down at the same. They all kind of come down at a very similar sort of rate. All right. So this is what I would call incoming, solar incoming, beyond our ionosphere. And this is the proof that, you know, like, all right, yeah, that came in from the outer, from beyond, beyond our ionosphere. Yeah, a local, a local atmosphere, which includes the ionosphere and the magnetosphere. All right, so this is coming in from a solar solar burst. We have it, it verified that there was a solar coronal, a uh, solar outburst, small outburst that should have arrived around this day, the sixth. So we have accepted. I have accepted that that was in, you know, historically speaking. That at that time, that that was a incoming burst, which is verified through the waveform, the identicalness of the waveform, and it's further verified by this. All right. So it's difficult to make the case that you know the the solar radiance, if it was truly solar radiance that was hitting the, the the one station in Italy that it also would not be hitting this one as well. Because as I showed you, as I just showed you, right, the similarities between the the hit at that time and what's going on here. The three of them line up. Your KP, right, in sync with the the signal from uh, Italy and the signal from Tom's. Right? So, I just want you to know that um, that there are local variances that will show up on certain machines because they're of the geographical area and how they're designed. But then there are other uh, extra or beyond local, you know, uh, celestial events that are also influencing us as well. Okay. So, right. I mean, both are happening. Both are happening. Right. I mean, it's just because one's happening doesn't mean the other's not right. Or just, you know what I mean? They're not mutually exclusive. Right. It's a lot of this is figuring out what's noise from the local and for understanding what's going on on the global scene. So, uh, all right. So I wanted to point that out. Um, I think we've, I think I've got to the end of this and I've made my, my point. Um, I have, um, there was two, like I said, there's two particular specific areas I want to point out or three, I guess. Even. One was the earthquakes to, you know, keep going on about that and show you, show you that. The other was to talk about, you know, 
falsify data, I think, still that bullshit myth. And then the third thing is to show you the influence of the, of the solar radiance on Tomsk, but also that the greater picture and the greater scheme of things, that if it's a real celestial event, uh, that will show up faithfully on both of the charts and on the other ones. All right. So that is this part of the lesson. I think I've um, made my point. I feel like I would be you know, spinning my wheels to be talking more. So um, there is, uh, there's another, uh, this was, you know, the part one of this, there's another video that comes with this that I'm going to um, go into I want to get myself resituated. So um, that's the end of this part one. Uh, this is going to be in a live stream, I'm sure. Uh, so um, thank you all for being here. I appreciate your your coming, your um, your love, and your support. Uh, and thank you for the interest in uh, the Schumer Resonances. Uh, so, you know, please, um, if you like this, uh, thumbs up. Tell your friends to come over. Share it. You know, share it as a post. Um, share it on Facebook. You know, give the link. Um, and um, I will be talking to you in a live stream soon. And let's have fun and let's chat. All right, so thank you all for being here. I appreciate very much you coming to uh, make this more fun for me. Um, and um, I wouldn't do this without, couldn't do this without your support and the wonderful comments I've got. Um, thank you all for being here. And I will see you in the next video or live stream. Good night. Thank you all.